So here we are, guys. We are finally going to be discussing episode eight, the season finale of season three of The Mandalorian. Now, whether you guys have good comments or bad comments about this, I will say this was very interesting. Um, a lot that happened in there, I was a little shocked of because we do see where it picks up right where it left off, where Bo Katan is trying to get everyone out of the cave and try to escape with the rest of the Mandalorians and she tells Axe Wolves to get help to bring all the rest of the Mandalorians in the dropships so that way they can take them on the ground because they would not be able to take them in space so he's able to make it and then once that happens he literally gets there just enough time to get the rest of the Mandalorians out there and go onto the dropship so that way they're able to go get help with Bo-Katan. Now, Bo-Katan actually does get a hold of Din Djarin because Din is actually able to escape from the uh, Imperial Mandalorians. And I will say it was cool because he got help from Baby Baby Yoda, uh, AKA Grogu, in here. Now, when he helps him, he actually uses, you know, the, I, the IG-11 uh, droid. So that's what's really cool about that. Now, I will say they kind of count on one another in this episode because they have to find a way to not only fight uh, the guards, but also he gets uh, you know R5 to get him help, so he can get schematics of where Moff Gideon is. And Moff Gideon knows where Din Djarin is, and he goes to go after him. And when as soon as Din Djarin starts going a little further, we see where uh, Moff Gideon was coming out. <clears throat> In the very first episode, in one of the episodes, we did get to see where Din tells him, okay, lower this shield, lower this shield. White takes on Imperial Guards at the same time. And then also where Grogu does help him. But then he goes into where these tubing areas are. And we see it's actually clones, but it's clones of Moff Gideon. And Din does destroy them. And of course, Moff Gideon does get angry. It was where he wanted the perfect clones where he could have Mandalorian armor with what he had, as well as also having the Force ability within him as well. That's what he wanted. And we do see this fight between Din Djarin as well as uh, Moff Gideon. And we see the rest of the clone, almost a clone, <laughs> the rest of the Mandalorians attack the base and the armor does help as well. So a lot of these theories that the armor was a traitor and she was a spy, I was kind of thinking about that too. So I was kind of wondering, What's going to happen? She even gathers a jetpack and they just take the fight to the Imperials. And we see this massive uh, space fight with Axe Wolves taking control of the ship as well, trying to handle the rest of the Imperial uh, fleet. So that way, just in case, he can use them as a decoy while the rest are trying to fight them on the ground. We see this great fight between, you know, Sasha Banks' character. We get to see the armor. We get to see the rest of the Mandalorian. Same thing with Bo-Katan, and Bo-Katan is using the Darksaber to just chop down the uh, <clears throat> Mando Imperials, I guess you would call them. And while this is happening, we see why Din's trying to take on Moff Gideon, and he's having issues. And then, of course, this, I'm sorry, but I will say this, this was kind of a, uh, of, a, of a bitch move, because if he's so superior, right, he's already beaten, unfortunately, Jin Jarn, because he's using the armor he's using whatever else that he has with robotics but he gets the royal guards to handle him and grogu has to help him and they mow down him in the ig-11 armor and then grogu's having to go on at the top so he could dodge them while he is trying to escape and then we see right when it looks like moff Gideon has more of a upper ground on Din that Bo comes and helps and she says go save your kid. So Din does go save Grogu. They have to work together to take on the Royal Guards. And then we also see where we finally get to see the fight between Gideon as well as also uh, Bo-Katan. Now we do see where they go back and forth and he, she is putting up a good fight. But what really made me angry in this episode guys is that the Darksaber gets destroyed because he feels like oh well if no one can have it then if I can't have it, then no one's going to have it. And that was pretty much, I'm sorry, it is a dick move because I feel like that, again, Moff Gideon is supposed to be this amazing, you know, villain, right? And I will say who plays Moff Gideon, um, he is a good actor, but at the same time, I felt like that, again, it's just he's really good at playing a dick. I will say that, but it was kind of cool because as soon as that happens, you see where he's about ready to kill 
uh, Bo Katan. But then at the same time, here comes Din Djarin because he even tells her, well, What are you going to do? You're going to surrender? And she says, No, man, Lawrence is stronger together. And I love that line. I really do because I feel like it's not only for the show, but I feel like it's for Star Wars fans at the same time because of what is going on in Star Wars fandom right now. But again, I will save that in another video like I did the other day. And between Din Djarin and Bo Katan, they were able to take down Moff Gideon, and Axe Wolves is able to land the ship into the imperial base while he tells the rest of the mandalorians to escape which they do and while everything started blowing up grogu's trying to help save everybody and so is Bo and Din Djarin. and when they're able to do that we see even grogu still fighting off moff gideon and moff gideon still trying to kill them and as soon as it happens as soon as the crash lands you just see this just a massive explosion and Gideon gets caught in the flames and between Din and Bo trying to protect Grogu, Grogu's able to do the same thing he was able to in the first season where he was able to use a force shield from them for to protect all the fire. And what was really cool was we got to see how Bo-Katan was able to relight the armor's manufacturing on Mandalore. So there's a bunch of Mandalorians that will be coming back more than likely at some point. We don't know when. We also see how the armor was re, I would say re-baptizing all the ones within their covert so that way they could re-download the creed. And Dan was going to have Grogu take the creed, but unfortunately with him being so young, he's not going to be able to speak it. And I will say what was cool is that we finally now have confirmation that Din does adopt Grogu because now it is Din Grogu. And I really like that. I thought that was cool how we finally have Grogu being the adoptive child of Mando, aka Din Djarin, and that he's gonna be taking them on the same adventures he was when he was a kid. So he does go uh, to the uh, Republic Rangers after talking to them and basically telling them, you know, hey, you know, I'm a bounty hunter by trade, but I kind of need to choose my missions wisely because I have him with me. And he basically tells them, like, so you want to work for the New Republic? He says, on a case by case. So he says, well, we're going to talk about that. He says, no, we're going to do it. He says, you know, it's a good choice. And he says, I'll do that. He says, but I want that IG-11 head that they found so he could re- program IG-11, the one that they all know and love, so that way he could be the new guardian and the new deputy of the town for Navarro. And Din does take, uh, you know, Carl Weathers' character's, uh, you know, invitation to have a house out on the outskirts of uh, Navarro. And the way the scene ends with him and Grogu settling down, having some time, and that's how it ends now i will say overall this episode was cool i didn't feel like it had the same exact excitement from i would say let's say season two but i will say it was interesting overall i'm um, kind of was kind of hoping to see we we're going to see like a skywalker or bubba fett or some other random character you know maybe like ahsoka or something I, I did not know what to expect um i did enjoy the episode it was very uh interesting i was like the entire time like i was kind of curious if they were going to try to kill Jen jarn off or they're going to try to kill grogu off because obviously with the movie that we're going to be getting, which I will be doing another video on, is going to be very interesting. But I think overall the season was kind of up and down for me, honestly. I enjoyed the season. I enjoyed more Mandalorians. I enjoyed seeing more Mandalorians. And now we're just going to have to wait and see when season four is going to come out and if we're going to be getting a season four, which we should. But again, there's no guarantees until they actually come out with it. So there's a lot more I could say here, guys. Um... Like I said, some episodes was okay for me. Some episodes was kind of eh. Um, other episodes was absolutely amazing. Um, I didn't. I did enjoy the season myself. I'm glad we got a lot more Bo Katan. Um, I know a lot of people were upset because they felt like she was still in the show, um, which in a way she did. But at the same time, I do like Bo Katan. I don't really have a problem with her as a character or with Kay Sackoff. So again, I don't have a problem with that. Um, I was very happy that we got to see more Mandalorians. We got to return to Mandalore. We got to see more of Mandalorians. And again, I, I just don't have a whole lot bad to say, honestly. Um, I just hope that we learn from our mistakes from season three and we actually don't go on this quest by quest deal, that we actually focus more on the main story than these side quest type of deals. So let me know what you guys thought about the finale as well as also the whole season. Um, if you guys enjoyed, please let me leave a like, comment down below what you guys thought about it down in the description below or down in the comments, I'm sorry. And I'll be seeing you guys as always on the next one.